Yeah. Yeah, can you show me? Yeah. Actually, you cool with us, so you can help us. I have no idea. Use some of the No, I know. I just don't want to have to call the cards. Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, is anyone not ready? We have heard from the South Caucasus. rising in Azerbaijan to take advantage of the in Russia. The last major reports that while there are free precautions between army and Azerbaijan, the voice of this escalation of Azerbaijan, these Russians could you bog down and clean the bottom of the sea down. As a perfect opportunity, the best act of pretty would be a diplomatic solution. Luckily, US diplomacy is to solve the conflict. The Turkey is going to write that the US underwrites the Western position. Russia needs to supervise keeping the blood efforts on track. Russia should save the country until Bakun consistently issues diplomacy over course and the specific changes to the behavior of Azerbaijan. Our nation is playing that clear measures the regime won't come to census. Something to the conflict, the said Iran is with this Gavin from who wrote that Iran and Athens troops were, were staging massive war games on Iran's border with Azerbaijan. Russia has so far refused our meetings calls to intervene. Iran, meanwhile, seems more than eager to fill the power vacuum and open another fight against Azerbaijan and its background. Iran should involvement in South Caucasus cement their regional hegemony. I was near this week that Iran sees Armenia as a state to Russia and the Eurasian Economic Union, while sees Turkey as its rival for influence in Central Asia. Iran's position on the conflict between Azerbaijan and Armenia, the Russian in return of the Persian Empire, and Iranian hegemony through Central East Asia ensures chaos and conflict. His position includes the greater Iran that would that would assume hegemonic control over much of the Middle East. Uh, Asia, Asia would abolish the, the Jewish state. More like statements <coughs> from the ultra to Iran's sectarian warfare, any future government will be 10 times more revolutionary. A conflict between Israel and Iran will be deadly. A TW argues that if a war between Israel and Iran were to break out, 20 million would lose their lives. In addition to Israel, many of whose judicial reforms have Israel in the brink of civil war. Share wrote last week that Israel is facing existential challenges for the first time since its, its inception. Israelists are talking openly about imminent civil war and a legal conflict brewing within Israel's borders. We triggered this with the intent by the government to implement judicial reform, limit the powers, limit the powers of the judiciary, and make illegal opinions of the government. Legal counsel non binding government will be above the law. It will be a law. 8,000 and 100,000 Israelis gathered in the center of Tel Aviv. After 20 years further, the senior Israeli figures have warned of civil war. They tell us for this. It's a growing strength of the, of the extreme religious right. Implements plan for the, for the judiciary is the fully including the beginning of the end for the, of the Third Temple. Unfortunately, Netanyahu, who's unattainable, can be pushing until civil war breaks out. Yeah, Algeria wrote last week that, that, Net, that Netanyahu plans to charge him with a, with a proposal to change each country's judicial system despite fierce criticism. The centerpiece of the new government's agenda is an unbridled attack on the, on the justice system. Only the Biden's policy can solve the most has he leverage to threaten the removal of country 23 properties. The only Biden can reign in Netanyahu when time is running out. The US pours billions to Israel every year. He needs to warn Netanyahu. He destroyed the Independence of Israel's courts, U.S. aid is suspended. Three to twenty-three continues. A Biden can nudge things into a healthier path and prevent the worst in a way that no other outsider can. The U.S. has given Israel extraordinary amounts of economic assistance, sensitive intelligence, their most advanced weapons, and virtually automatic backing against biased resolutions in the U.S. 
The effect of Israeli civil war is dire. And Yahoo will attempt to divert attention to escalate throughout West Asia. Sheriff 23 concludes they will leader that Yahoo will choose to export the crisis in order to deflect Israeli public opinion and postpone internal strife, inventing a confrontation with Hamas in Gaza or Hezbollah in Lebanon, and launch a preemptive strike against Iran. Israel is on the verge of imploding, specifically, or with Iran goes nuclear and costs millions of lives as other actors are drawn in. The TJW uh, argues that 620 million Iranians would lose their lives and 800,000 Israelis. Syria would join the bandwagon and law missiles with chemical and biological warheads into Israel. Syria would be forced to grapple with the deaths of approximately 18 million of its citizens were Israel to respond with its nuclear arsenal. Israel would launch a nuclear attack on Cairo if Egypt joined the fray. That causes extinction. Star finds a nuclear winter would cause humans to die nuclear famine and a mass extinction event. We have time to We're going to take two seconds. Uh, just a quick content warning: the argument you run is around the problem of violence, trapping, and poverty. The argument is for some internal topics, and the argument is to make graphic descriptions and use this content warning. Thank you. Thank you. Five right, seconds. I know you guys are good. You can confirm that it's like the same traffic is like. Yep. The mayor's block has been very slow. It's very close. I understand. I'll let you guys in there. That's a little bit later. Wait, no. I also just got it. All right, cool. That being said, time to begin. Now, we need to get resolved. The United States federal government should increase its diplomatic effort to peacefully resolve internal armed conflicts in West Asia. Contention was terrorism. Terrorism is down. Global terrorism index 2021 reports that deaths from terrorism are now 59% lower than their peak. That's an MENA fall by 87% since 2016. However, renewed diplomacy increases terror threats through nation building. U.S. diplomacy that forces new political systems on the populace breeds resentment. Oregon Note 21 writes that U.S. policy emphasizes diplomatic engagement alongside civil society groups to increase their influence in other countries. Support for civil society can be viewed as an effort to influence a country's internal political uh, processes or regime change efforts. However, U.S. nation building is seen as imperialistic intervention and increasing terrorism against the perceived threat. For all 17 writes that post-war nation building, is with, uh, especially by outside powers, was trusted by local populations have a poor track record. And Pierre Guitar continues that interest of political pressure have created chaos and resentment and fueled additional terrorism as Afghanistan and Iraq, Libya, Syria, and Yemen can attest. Concluding that nation building efforts cause more of an anti American sentiment and the conditions that lead to terrorism. The impact of state class, spikes in terrorism, cause state failure and civil war. IO 16 writes that the presence of violent non state actors in favor of fragile states emerges as particularly conducive to state failure. Michael 18 finds that failed states are the biggest re generators of humanitarian crises and refugees may endanger regimes, civilian and neighboring states, and enable acts for weapons stolen from, causing, uh, from collapsing military facilities. Contention to his young. Aggression is down. Contrary to the war crimes and not return to the level of violence, we need to refrain from launching missiles and drones across the border. Iranian support is down. So, Volume 18 finds that Iran's government is very much preoccupied with domestic unrest and strategies for managing the protests. The regime needs to channel its resources towards the situation at home and become less involved in Yemen. The Houthis see the wars of stalemate and don't want to continue. International Armed Crisis Group 22 writes that the Houthis have long claimed to seek peace with the war approaching military equilibrium and be to their benefit but to buy themselves and breathing them. However, U.S. diplomacy restarts the wars from emboldening them. The Houthis see negotiation as weakness increases attacks. Very time 22 was signaled by the Biden administration intended to encourage the parties to return to the negotiation table. Encourage some of the Houthi leadership to believe that the door is open for an intensified military campaign. This emboldens the Houthis. Very time 22 diplomatic breakthrough in Yemen and Iran increases the list of weapons supply to the Houthis over this time period to enable for more lethal attacks in Yemen. The Houthis misread by and pressuring Saudi Arabia to end its military operations would open the door for the military victory. The Houthis increase their military operations. This leads to a renewed conflict. World 21 quantifies that born young continues to 2031.3 million people die, 22.2 million people may be forced to operate, and 9.2 million people may experience malnutrition. 
Contention for each two performance. U.S. military performance from a global counter 22 right that there is a torch towards decreasing uh, U.S. military abroad collecting as much less cost to bring back troops stationed abroad. In West Asia, con counter continues that there is a steady decrease in the number of personnel needed for overseas operations across the SICOM region. This trend is good. The military deployments increase demand for traffic and resources to gather and maintain the flow of accountability. It's repenting and firm to entertain the district for near military camp for women suffering as a result of human trafficking. All of the fact that this year, number of U.S. military deploy personnel running large demand for trafficked women. Unfortunately, increased diplomatic uh, diplomacy in West Asia increased true presence in two ways. The first is private diplomatic. Security. Diplomatic deployments have high conflict and require large security contentious VOA and 09 right that conducing diplomacy in a war zone has required a shift to human resource diplomatic security to require to provide security to more dangerous posts in this region. This causes the outsourcing of contracts. The GAO continues that security has been increased and in its use of contracts specifically through increases in the use of contracts which provides protective detail for American diplomats in high threat environments. Approximately 90% of all diplomatic security personnel are contractors. Contractors are uniquely likely to engage in trafficking rings. King 22 writes that human trafficking still persists overseas by some U.S. government so contractors' mitigation efforts have not been. Probably implemented by government officials, the contract regulations is different in reporting requirements for contractors. Second is public diplomacy. All in an outgoing, the military often engages in public diplomacy, a soft power tool, a tool that state actors can use to influence the preferences of the public and other states. U.S. military has played an important role in socialization. U.S. military presence can serve as a diplomatic uh, uh, public tool, uh, diplomacy. Uh, contact with U.S. personnel to create social capital. This diplomatic consent is why our troops remain elsewhere. All it continues that the United States for over seven years can approximately 15 to 30 percent of its military in East Asia. Troops covered by diplomacy as all nations conclude that U.S. foreign policy has been the deployment of hundreds of thousands of military personnel. Temporary wartime deployments have become pre uh, permanent presence codified in treaties. Residents are more likely to encounter U.S. military personnel than any other U.S. government active U.S. military personnel are serving as diplomats. Overall, the impact of increased trafficking from military diplomacy is traumatized. All in 17 rights and eight, uh, the depression and PTSD report by 68 percent trafficking. Are we here for costs? Yeah. Okay. You want to sit or stand? Okay, sure. Um, can I think first question? Yeah. Empirically, when have terrorists gotten involved in like conflicts in West Asia? When the United States is not in the region. Wait, I mean, like in the timeline of a conflict, right? In like Syria or Iraq or Afghanistan. When does like when do they actually go in and intervene into these conflicts? They usually start them to this What point are you trying to get across? Because in all these conflicts, the way that terrorism is like actually coming in and increasing is when they take advantage of the chaos already existing. All you're doing is blaming these issues on terrorism when in reality there are so many other root causes of these conflicts. So you're just trying to say terrorism root cause chaos, not American nation building? No, I'm saying that. The reason why terrorists go into the region is after the conflict happens. So they're not the reason why we see conflict occur. They just come in and try and take advantage of conflict. What our point is like just like this nation really causes terrorism. It's like a purely proven like Afghanistan, Iraq, Libya, Syria, and Yemen. Sure, you're yeah. telling Syria. No, yeah, yeah, I don't know what this response is really. Um, That's fine. Yeah. Can you explain like what are the two parties of the civil war in Israel? Um I would say it's like the Israeli government and like the people who are riding against the new policies that then has put into place. So there's currently like, but who's you kept on saying like one name, it's like like so it's it's just people versus you kept on saying um the dog. Okay. It's do you just, know what do you know what I'm referring to? You kept on saying like the top, the top, yeah. That? He's the president of Israel. So and so he's the one driving the policy because he's so like he basically has a stranglehold over the government. And what he's doing is imposing all these new restrictions on the judicial system. So right now, tens of thousands of Israelis are taking up arms, having violent riots and protests in Israel. And, that, and that's what's actually gonna be caught the conflict throughout that time. So it's really like a civil war that's like over. Yeah, we're yeah. on the brink of civil war now because right. people are now starting to like violently protest. I have a question on your like militarism stuff. You're like two on CQ. Yeah. How is militarization possible? Wait, we don't have a link to on CQ. Oh, sorry, C30. Oh, C30. Public diplomacy? Yeah. So yeah. how is militarization feasible? Um, it's to it's not that we're using like it's not like we're putting in troops to fight. We have to put in the troops in order for diplomacy to work because they're the ones that create the like social capital that allows diplomacy to work. Wait, so, so the resolution talked about us doing peaceful diplomacy in the region. Yeah. Correct? The only How way you can do that. The only like, way you can do that 
what our evidence says, the only way that you can actually have diplomacy is if you create like military personnel to go into the region, not like guns ablaze, but just like like in the region with the people okay. to create public diplomacy. We would give you other incentives, like for example, you have to aid or economic stuff. But I would just also that's say that this makes true. zero sense. The point with it's just not a good song. Can you like see the cards in the doc for some reason? Yeah. Like, I'm good. It's like I'm getting a little my
DSS needs more money to fund these needed. We build up the DSS recruitment and training pipeline. Meaning when you do the affirmative and you give them more money, they don't actually have to outsource the contractors they talk about. But Russia filling this up direct to their trafficking argument with the US accent in Syria, Russia is filling in obvious winning awards with risk withdrawal Russian experts and, and engaging with Afghanistan. Russia is using diplomatic clouds as interest in disrupting interpretation as a key diplomatic partner in the region. Russia is uniquely worse because they use private military contractors when they fill in fronts the right PMCs are poised to expand their roles and instrument of Russian policy in Libya and other hotspots. This is two implications. One, it takes other languages, any contract to trigger There's some evidence it's not just about the US. It says, oh, states create challenges by exercising controls over PMC. Second, it's determined because Russian contractors are worse than the US. Hard in 20 rights, Russian mercenaries have committed human rights abuse violations, including mass escalations. But on their link about public diplomatic security, their own evidence includes it would be tracked too. Allen explains our results just that low level of unsanitary records of public diplomacy may yield different results at the point in which it's tracked to the whole world to be inconspicuous. They don't need to use public diplomacy. Uh, Actually, real quick, was the first turn on terror? I didn't check it off. First turn on uh, the letter, oh, collaboration. yeah, it's collaboration on the letter. Okay, yeah, start. Where is going to be from running the middle? Everybody good? On terrorism, when they say the terrorism is increasing now, no, their evidence is from literally a UN uh, counter terror operation. Obviously, they have incentive to say that terror is going to increase so they can keep doing these uh, like uh, in insertions that the UN actually does. But beyond, their evidence is talking hypothetically. The GTI evidence indicates that holistically speaking, deaths from terror down 59% of terrorism has fallen drastically on their turn about leadership. Their evidence is saying that leaders should promote awareness. There's no warrant for why this is needed with diplomacy. We can promote a awareness outside of diplomacy. Check the evidence. It's terrible. The third response is that it's not nation building. They have conceded the Reagan evidence response that diplomacy forces. New political systems and nation building. It's the link is conceded on the impact. They say that it is an existential aid. They've conceded that from the uh, Michael Evans that it predicts any conflict scenario because it causes massive failures and humanitarian crisis, which drives instability in neighboring countries. But beats about state collapses, which the uh, leave evidence finds independently kills hundreds of thousands of people on Yemen. One, they say that the conflict is going to increase right now. They have, and uh, the only reason why it's not working, uh, that it isn't increasing, is there was a ceasefire. They have conceded that the real why this isn't true because the Houthi said see the wars approaching a stalemate and they do not want to increase. Increase violence. They don't want to return to the same level of conflict. They do not address this warranty, even if their evidence post it doesn't make a difference. The perception of the Houthis has to change. But B, their evidence says that it would be bad if it returned to conflict. If we win, that it's not going to, because neither side wants to return to that point. At that point, we're we're winning unique this debate. On the turn, they said that we need politics, not military intervention. A, their evidence does not give a warrant for why it is binary, and they don't tell you why it is. Don't let them blow up war in the back half. But B, they see that politics empirically fail because fighting diplomacy causes Houthi leadership to believe there's a door for more war. Go to trafficking. One, they say the O'Connor evidence is bad. No, O'Connor indicates that troops are still holistically down. The second evidence they say is that the Houthi evidence is bad. No, our evidence indicates that uh, when we deploy entertain, uh, when we deploy military bases, it sets up entertainment districts, which increases trafficking. The third response to that, of course, the trade-off. A, we warned that these troops come from home. Their evidence concedes that it does. We don't want to pull resources outside of East Asia. At that point, you know, they just come domestically. There is no trade up. But B, we warned that well, West Asia is uniquely bad because there's lax law enforcement. East Asia doesn't reciprocate this. Out on, uh, at the bottom, one, they say that we don't have to outsource. One, it's purely cheaper. We're always going to do it no matter what. On the Russia fill in turn, uh, Ukraine is putting the pressure on Russian resources. They don't have the capability. Ukraine 23 writes earlier this month, squeeze by its strategic blunder. Moscow shrinking strategic bandwidth and its diminished capacities has been compelled to consolidate forces that post state their evidence. At the bottom, um, they say it's going to be tracked through diplomacy. What does this mean? We say that we have to do foster public relations to do diplomacy. Go to that case. 
One, our media doesn't see the U.S. as a credible media. So soon 22 reveals that the U.S. repeats several times that our media strengthens its commitment to a democratic path of respect to human rights by ignoring the violation of human rights and kind of democracy in our media. They're not going to negotiate. Second, turn to diplomacy would only back Azerbaijan lobbying groups. Now the 22 front that U.S. talks of the habit of disparaging diplomatic engagement. Azerbaijan is a good example over the years where risk caspian nations cultivated a network of allies and mostly, and mostly hawkish Washington think tank. Third, religious differences make mediation impossible. France 20 indicates that decades old conflict is abruptly recognized as part of a Muslim majority. Azerbaijan, the Nagro Kabar region has an Armenian majority. Fourth, hardliners of Azerbaijan means they won't negotiate because it makes them look like Kalisky. 22 from this month warns that Azerbaijan's modern history, the explicit links many of the activists has with the ruling regime, military personnel in the crowds make them refuse to negotiate. Go to C2. Uh, one on unique is they don't give any evidence saying that civil war is going to happen. It just is that people are talking about it on the link. One domestic politics prevent, uh, prevent mediation. Constant 21 writes that America's torture domestic politics are hampered coherence in its foreign policy relations with Israel are so politicized that the U.S. rules long gone. The Afghan withdrawal is based on a diplomatic political factor, not strategy. We're not going to cut off support or mediate against Israel. Two, the military industrial complex we warned that because we sell so much weapons to Israel, not willing to actually uh, cut off support because these weapons manufacturers make a lot of money by sending aid. Three, you can turn it to offense that out. 20 writes that U.S. unconditional support of Israel creates unique power dynamics that makes Palestine's solution impossible. Tell him, I mean, 22 explains that the U.S. is not advised to end an Israeli-Palestine conflict and part of the overwhelming asymmetry of a power favoring Israel and the United States is nothing and further, further implicating what uh, Israel done triggering a uh, triggering a state collapse. Uh, that triggers a state collapse. Sharik 13 explains that the tiny radical position put regional and global security in danger. The U.S. must take a harder line with uh, letting it fall. It's a diplomatic shield continue to enable to handle threats, dangerous, unprecedented consequences. Finally, we say that the U.N. will solve better for their some mediation scenario to how me 21 finds that vetoing U.N. action against Israel cooperation needs to deal with Israel without serious concessions on Palestine taking key. Unique and worse. 
Netanyahu who has to divert attention because it becomes this massive civil war where he's getting cut by like the even further right, right there. the even further left, and he doesn't know what to do. So he has to divert attention. I'm gonna take a question now. Cool. Let's talk about trafficking, right? Sure. You make all of these like nice responses about like at the world level, right? Thank you. Yeah, but your roots evidence is specific to East Asian bases. So the one thing is South Korea. The Wait, but the things it cites is about South Korea, correct? They're yeah. saying that in East Asia it's happening in years ago. No, 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 it's not. It's not a yes or no question because I know you're going to try to blow up this trade-off analysis. Sure. One is not uniquely worse than the other. The Who's general analysis is that when we do military deployments, it creates entertainment districts which create trafficking. The impurity is South Korea, but that doesn't make it worse or better than West Asia. Sure. So your impact is non-unique, though, right? No. To a certain extent, your impact is non-unique. Trafficking is always scary. All right. What are you going to? Uh, let's talk about. Let's talk about Armenia. Sure. So. Why can't like the UN or NATO step in? They don't have the leverage. Our our mere evidence is specific in saying only the US has the leverage because the buying is the only actor is able to be sanctioned the blocking, which is the capital loss for sure. So we can't only the US has the EU the sanctions. The EU? Yeah, why can't the EU do sanctions? Uh, I mean I'm saying that they don't have the leverage to and they need much more like approval processes. Um, we'll take a look at Onto Israel. We tell you that right now Israel's, Israel's the biggest civil war. Netanyahu is putting in so many judicial wars, restricting the judicial system. That means that literally right now, 100,000 people are in the Israeli capital and actually having violent riots and, and like riding against the government. That's what that's what's pushing putting Israel on the brink of civil war. That's what our, our evidence for like experts actually says. That means that right now, US diplomacy is the only form of sovereignty because US actually has leverage to make Israel come to the negotiating table. We see that the US can threaten to remove aid, like weapons and, and, and economics. That's what actually prevents Israel from escalating and actually like prevent the, the war. Um, I mean, that's really, really clean. Well, all it tells you is that right now, and yeah, we'll see it as a, as a will need to like divert attention to other issues as of like escalation to West Asia. That means that it will still strike Iran, work upon Hamas and Hezbollah. That's how it probably brings to be all these major actors and creates new control because all these major powers come in and escalates to the level that causes exchange. This is always going to be the biggest, the biggest impact on the ground. Let's go to their response. The first thing is that they tell you won't happen, but our evidence is very, very clear. The internal link is clean drop. Right now, we literally see that they're on the brink of war because of all these riots against traditional reforms. The second thing they tell you how, uh, how they're not going to cross the border because of domestic 
or in like profit on arms. But this point, it doesn't matter. We're not actually doing it. We're just threatening to pull in. We're threatening to pull arms. So I'm actually doing it. That, that's like a very unique like the way telling you how that's the reason why US supremacy is so key to solve. Then they tell you about Palestine. That's all responsive. We talk about Israel some more on Palestine. They tell you about how the UN solves better. But two things here, first of all, there's no solvency now with the UN. But secondly, they don't have the same US leverage of aid and like arms sales. They don't have that unique incentive as to why US supremacy is so key. We make sure seen here for a few reasons. First of all, we have the biggest impact on the Iran at the point where Israel and Iran, that conflict brings in a lot of other actors. I mean, so that's always going to be the biggest conflict and the biggest, like, um, like impact on the ground. But secondly, I would argue that we link into terrorism because we see, like, all these, like, oh, this chaos to have, like, this chaos means the terrorists can actually take advantage of the conflict and get a lot worse. But then that also means that trafficking, the trafficking will have less accountability because of the chaos. And we're not going to be able to see as much, like, legal action or like, accountability in, like, war. Let's go to, like, their case. First of all, on terrorism, terrorism right now is, like, going up. Our warranty is very clean. You can see that tells us that, that, tells us that, that technology is going to be a lot better for terrorists. That makes their threat a lot worse. That's clean. You can see But the technically, on Yemen, we tell you two things. First of all, Russia is down now because we're coming out of a ceasefire. But we're telling you that are about to be more aggressive because we dropped some warranty. Well, they tell you that we still, like, want to end the war. But in reality, again, we've literally seen aggression in the past between stalemates. All they're telling you is, oh, in the short term, temporarily, after the stalemate, we're seeing less aggression. But secondly, I argue that right now, we're going to see more military presence with, like, without diplomacy. Our business is very specific in that when we have peaceful diplomacy, we see no kind of military presence. That means that when we see less military presence, we're not seeing a like, U.S. militarization continuing to escalate conflict that actually makes Yemen worse. On to their C3. Two things here, first of all, they, like, on their link, one, the, the bus security, like, that service is not the military. That's what actually accompanies the mass. Secondly, uh, like, another thing, because their own evidence is very specific thing that track to you is, like, what's actually being used in the region. That, that means that these, clo- like, these negotiations behind closed doors are not going to involve any kind of public diplomacy. At that point, it makes make any sense. But then, third, I would argue that their own O'Connor evidence tells you how we're still going to see, like, so many of these truths go out throughout the region. We're still going to see these same issues happen. At that point, you always look clearly to extinct. That's, that's, always, that's always going to be the biggest irreversible impact on the ground. It's going to go on RC, or it's going to, I'll sign first, it's going to go our case, Wang, their case, and then it might be back on my case again. Say you started on C3? Sorry, it's C2. C3, then your case, then it's actually C1.
All right. Time will begin. Now, short RC2 has been five months since the ceasefire. There hasn't been any increased aggression. Then they tell you that they're peaceful because, like, uh, the US, it's either peaceful diplomacy or US military. We don't have US military in the presence right now. And we don't have diplomacy, which means that's not mutually exclusive. Go to our third contention on tracking. I'm fired with this. The US military deployments are coming home and there's going to steady decrease in one region. So we tell that this decrease is good because US military personnel increased tracking women. All right, because US military personnel have a large demand for traffic women. We're going for a second sub point on public diplomacy. All of the military often engage in public diplomacy for the United States to foster public relations in the first place. We're required to do diplomacy. The US and Purely the voice troops to build up our image. The impact is trauma, all the system of depression, and PTSD report by 68% of people. They have to respond to the first one specific to so our first one, so you don't have to front line it. Go to the second one. They try to tell you that track to diplomacy is going to like go through closed doors. First off, they don't flesh out what track to diplomacy is. If anyone can tell me what track to diplomacy then that would be really cool, but they didn't actually explain in the round. Secondly, responding to the fact that it's closed doors, you still need public diplomacy and you still need public perception because even if there's a treaty that comes out of the closed doors, the people will be mad at the government for making the treaty in the first place, so you still need public diplomacy. Then they try to tell you that there could be like less, less troops in the region for per our fire evidence. We tell you it's scale. We tell you that they're still decreasing the amount of troops right now, which is overall net beneficial. You have to increase a lot more if we increase the pulse in the region. Then uh, go to the way. First, on intervening action, we're to find the tracking is but concealed rings to uh, keep their tracks done well. It's not in the interest of military or private contractors. What we would tell you is that empirically, once a victim gets trapped, it's impossible for intervening actions to save them. Whereas tons of people are working tirelessly on this Israel uh, issue right now. Then on the extinction wane, Taylor 18 explains that an individual workload is altered by the trauma and drug resulting intergenerational transmission of trauma. Saving one victim from trapping saves generations down the line for the cycles of trauma. This means that we, in fact, we impact an infinite amount of scope, which is the same as our magnitude extension. Then they uh, then they say conflicts distract fighting trafficking. No one cared enough to do, no one cared nobody cared enough to do anything with conflict. Even if the world was 100 percent peaceful, co -op, co -op, corporate and military sellouts and government would distract them with some sort of issue that isn't trafficking. So, uh, then go to their argument about uh, Israel. First off, two responses off the top. First off, the MIC will uh, or first off on the MIC, we tell you that the United States has a military industrial complex, which are always and Israel keeps on buying weapons, which means that no matter what, we would start to support them. And secondly, we tell you that the domestic lobbyists would never actually threaten Israel. They try and tell you that they, they would just like threaten them and like not actually do anything like that. That makes absolutely no sense. They know that the Israel government knows that the United States is very reliant on their military arms and that we actually like them a lot. There's no reason why like any of this leverage would actually happen. Um, yeah, like what does it actually do when you threaten them? Then go to our second contention. Go to our first attention on terror. DT finds that deaths from terror down 59% of MENA and attacks have fallen by 87%. Reading diplomacy increases terror through nation building or recognize that diplomacy forces new political systems nation building use nation building stands in pure less than a poor track record for all finds that issues political pressure across chaos in Afghanistan, Iraq, Libya, Syria, and Yemen. For all finds that nation building breeds anti American sentiments, leads to terror, the impact of state collapse, the other finds that terrorism causes state collapse, like that's failed state, generating humanitarian crisis to refugees. Uh, they only read one response that's saying like the tech is getting better, so there's going to be a, like an increase in terrorism. They like it's all speculation. They don't actually have statistics behind terrorism going up or going down. We're going to have it. They just say that the tech's getting better. This argument is really important because it links into their argument. Insofar as there's like terrorism and instability in the region that causes the same impact to this like Israel thing in the future, because the Israel government has to be worried about other terrorist groups, which makes them like divert the attention away in those wars. The framing you give is saying that trafficking should come first, right? Uh, because you know many actors. Yeah, you know um, on your argument, like, what? Why would Israel ever feel threatened by like these empty threats? Why would they feel threatened by eight hundred thousand people going to Tel Aviv and all this? No, 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 no. The empty threats from the United States, like the polls. I would say, saying that you're going to pull literally every single form of assistance you give is not an empty threat. That's no, no, no. The, the definition of like an empty threat is when it's like a threat that's really big but doesn't actually have any back. You really tell us that they're just going to like they're going to go into the like the diplomacy and be like, oh, we're going to pull the stuff, but they're not actually going to pull it. Which means the Israel government also knows they're not actually going to pull it because the United States economy and the lobbyists in like, Congress rely yeah. on the money that's being supported. Okay, I think a few things. First of all, obviously, it's giving you a second summary. Second, I would also argue that you have to tell me why the incentive, why Israel actually like knows that the US won't do it. Because I would argue that like Israel's like our involvement with Israel is going to be a very small part of our overall activity, right? I would argue that us actually just inserting that threat, even the remote probability of us removing all that crucial aid and weapons, will always be leveraged in negotiations. What we would tell you, like we're into this like later, but what we would tell you is that they wouldn't move the threat because the United States has been purely safe for like seventy years. 
well, yeah, sure, but we haven't tried diplomacy in this way, right? If we increase diplomacy with it's real and actually- The reason why we haven't tried it this way is because we never do it because it would kill our economy. That's why you look firm, because then you actually put more money no. efforts into just Israel you, and like threaten to- right. Just because you increase diplomacy in West Asia doesn't mean the United States still wouldn't do like the diplomatic things that they would never do. Like the United States would never like go to Saudi Arabia and like diplomatically say, whatever okay here's the issue the u.s has been involved with israel palestine in the past but right now what's really unique is that israel is very no, like, israel, israel, on the u.s it's not, it's not, sorry you're israel it's not israel, it's not, israel, it's, not. Right. it's not okay yeah, cool. but, so all i'm saying is like they were involved in that region they were involved with israel in yeah. like with israel. yeah that they means were supporting that israel, israel. They have interest there and that's why they want to like also decreased tensions. Yeah, when they the went country. into the region with Israel Palestine, they were directly supporting Israel and like giving them money. Wait, I have a question, and right? Weapons. If the US is so like supportive of Israel, yeah. why would they not get involved if that, if that government's in danger? Well, they wouldn't get involved. They wouldn't like yeah, threaten to be. pull out their, they wouldn't threaten to pull out yeah. their like supplies from the Israeli government. Like they that's true. Do that for sort of diplomacy. Your Even mediation, whoa, 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 your mediation, real quick, real quick. Your sure. mediation like is contingent on when we withdraw support for Israel. Our warrant is saying that the U.S. never does that for both reasons that we give. Yeah, I see that. That's the whole point of the topic is that we're increasing diplomacy. We get to fiat the diplomatic action. We also no, you, you can't just say we're not doing what happens. I mean, we get it's, to fiat increasing diplomacy out. You can't just do like this and tell you it's the only way to peace itself. No, 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 the United States is fiat. You can't just say, oh, the United States is going to do diplomacy that gives every other region in West Asia like what happened. We don't have questions. Anyone not ready? Fantastic. Off time roadmap is just going to be uh, weighing our case, their case. Fantastic. On the way, the they say trafficking should come first because nobody tries to resolve, and there's so many intervening actors for conflict. But they can see the fact that no one is resolving the Israeli civil war right now. At that point, it's just as good as trafficking. Second, though, they can see the way that conflict is the root cause of trafficking and no exacerbated, meaning we're literally linking in to their trafficking impact. At that point, you have to look first out though about Israel. It's functionally conceded. The argument is very simple. We're talking Israeli civil war is coming right now because then you continue to push judicial reforms. They can see the fact that that will literally trigger an Israeli civil war. The only question you have to ask is how do you solve? Remember, the link is really clear by to do use diplomacy because he has leverage over Israel. When they give you the response saying the U.S. military industrial complex means we sell weapons to Israel, that is literally our argument because of that leverage. When we threaten withdrawal, of course, then how you to scale back is judicial reforms, meaning there's no civil war that was solved back for the entire complex scenario. Where the impact is functionally conceded. We tell you that when there's a civil war in Israel, Netanyahu has to divert attention. He says that by striking away at Iran. Why does that matter? Well, it means millions of people will die as other actors get drawn in because of the scope of the conflict. That is a functional prerequisite to their case, but they can see that the impact scenario means we have a functional prerequisite because when there's massive conflict, you see way more trafficking because there's less con con accountability in the war scenario and more troops involved. Meaning if you want to prevent trafficking, you have to solve for his really civil war. The only link response they give you is that the diplomacy will happen. I will argue it literally will. That's how cut the court saying that the only thing we can do to peacefully resolve conflict is threaten withdrawing our aid. Second, I would argue Israel has to listen to threats because of how contingent they are on US support. At that point, it's pretty clear we're accessing a prerequisite. But let's go into an argument about drafting. When they kick out of the first link, they think it makes their second link cleaner. That's not true. The response we give you on the first link is that it's about the Department of State outsourcing to private contractors. They can see the fact the affirmative increases revenue from the Department of State by giving them more funding, meaning they don't have to outsource it to contractors. That mitigates the results of their second link. But on their second link, bounces this explicitly. They just say it's always going to be public diplomacy. What is track two? Well, track two is what their evidence literally completes is inconspicuous diplomacy, meaning it doesn't have to be accessible to the public. At that point, we can pull a pre they can see the awards coming in the affirmative. It's the only chance for something. They also can see the response to link one that mitigates their link to it's pretty clear. We're just gonna be terror in their case and then or terror weighing we get to do like
on terrorism. It's been seen. GTI finds the deaths on terror down by 59% in the MENA and attacks have fell by 87%. Renewed diplomacy increased terror through nation building. Reagan finds that diplomacy forced a new political system to nation building. Thrall finds that U.S. nation building is seen as imperialistic and a fourth track record. Thrall finds that nation building breeds anti American sentiment, which leads to terror. The impact of state philosophy finds that terrorism causes state collapse. Michael finds that failed state generates humanitarian crisis, refugees, and instability in neighboring countries. Go to the way. This links to the traffic in two ways. A, they can see that this links into their argument about, uh, argument about Israel because they can see that Israel's forced to divert attention when, when terrorist hotspots pop up because they're forced to like distract the people from the huge terrorism that's actually increasing. But secondly, the warrant they accept for why trafficking happens with conflict is because of a lack of accountability. Terrorists obviously lack accountability. At that point, we're also linking into the traffic debate, but you should prefer some probability as conceded. Uh, let's go to their case. Yeah, on their case. Both our warrants at the top are functionally conceded. The MIC warrant is that Israel, we're not willing to cut support from Israel because our arms dealers that have huge lobbying over the uh, over the US are not willing to cut support. Then sec uh, secondly, extend the domestic lobbying means that we always support Israel and we're unwilling to cut support from their response to that. Uh, yeah, their response to that, uh, we're, we're gonna threaten support. Both of these warrants are why we're never willing to threaten support in the first place because A, they have conceded that we're never actually gonna go through with it because we don't wanna risk cutting off relations in the first place. But B, this is why Israel knows that we're not going to actually go through with anything, which is why they don't care about the diplomacy we actually do. This scenario still happens. Uh, more weighing on terrorism. Terrorism is a bigger scope too, because not only does it cause Israel to use war to divert their attention, because any, any country that has response to this terrorism triggering it on a bigger scale. Let's go to uh, trafficking. On trafficking, O'Connor finds that U.S. military deployments are coming home. The link are going for is public diplomacy. Allen finds that military often engage in public diplomacy for the U.S. Allen finds that foster public relations in the first place was required to do diplomacy. The impact is trauma. Since the depression and PTSD reported by 68% of trafficking, their only response they extend is that the first link would against the second. No, it doesn't. Our first link, they have conceded that to fundamentally do diplomacy in the first place, you have to do engage in public diplomacy. It has nothing to do with outsourcing. Our argument is that to build up the relations in the first place, you have to do to, uh, have to deploy troops. Uh, on the intervening actors weighing. Extend that, extend that, like the UN, NATO, and a bunch of other different organizations are trying to solve their conflict scenario. Del Barton, who speaks second. Ezekiel. Ezekiel. That, that's me. That's, um, so you are the, yeah. Thank you. 